Hey y'all, it's CJ with Smoky Beginnings. Let me tell you something that I'm totally not proud of. Back in the day, I used to be the king of dry steaks, but those days are long gone. And today, I'm sharing my secrets that I learned along the way for how to perfectly grill tomahawk steak on a charcoal grill every single time. Plus, we'll be making some cheesy potato wedges that are the perfect side dish. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go. Alrighty, let's get this grill fired up. We're gonna go for a two zone fire today. This way, you get the best of both worlds. A screaming hot sear for your meat and a gentler heat to finish it off. If you're interested in learning how to use the two zone fire setup for hamburgers and hot dogs, I have covered the whole process in detail in a previous video. So stay tuned until the end of this video where I have a link to that video. And while you're here, make sure to like and subscribe. Not only are you supporting a small channel, but you're playing an integral part in helping the channel grow. Now, let's talk about the star of the show, the tomahawk steak. It's a ridiculously flavorful cut packed with marbling, and let's be honest, it looks super impressive when it's cooked. To get that perfect cook on your tomahawk, we need the steak to hang out at room temperature. This takes the chill off and ensures even cooking throughout. So take the steak out of the fridge about 45 minutes before you fire up the grill and make sure to get rid of any moisture on the surface. Today, we're gonna use mayonnaise as our binder. If you haven't tried it yet, give it a try. It gives you a crispy, crunchy crust that's to die for. Since the tomahawk is a ribeye, it has a decent amount of fat and flavor. So seasoning is key. Keep it simple with some salt, pepper, and if you're feeling adventurous, hit it with a little garlic powder. And by now, your grill is smoking hot. Time to get the tomahawk on the grill. And we're going for a reverse sear. Slap it on the cooler side and let it slowly come up to temp. It has been about 15 minutes of cooking time. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the steak. Now, most people are gonna say only flip one. I like to flip and flop multiple times to ensure that I'm not burning it. So flip the steak, close the lid, and come back in an hour 15 minutes to check in so it's been about 30 minutes and it's time to check in and look at that color the fat has rendered the juices are oozing it looks great and we're getting pretty close to being done it is now the perfect time to start our searing process i like to start searing at about 10 to 15 degrees below my desired internal temperature so i'll move the steak over to the hotter side one of the things that i learned along the way is in order to nail that perfect doneness we got to use a tool called a meat thermometer trust me it's the key to unlocking juicy delicious steak every single time for the techies out there you can use a fancy meat probe like my meter plus it constantly checks the internal temperature of the steak and even the ambient temperature of the grill plus it sends alerts straight to your phone via Bluetooth. Now let's talk about letting the steak rest. Carefully transfer that beautiful tomahawk to a cutting board. Then drench it in some herb butter. Then give the steak a little rest, about 15 minutes. Tan it with some foil. While the steak is resting, let me show you how to make the perfect side dish. My super cheesy potato wedges. And here's how I made them. First, we gotta wash and chop some potatoes into wedges. And to get them extra crispy, soak them in a bowl of salt water for a bit. That step is optional, but it helps draw out some starch, which leads to a crispier texture. The next step is placing the wedges into a preheated air fryer. But before we toss them in, let's talk about seasoning. Today, I'm feeling a kick. So I'm using Everglades fish and chicken rub. It's got this awesome blend of smoky paprika, a hint of garlic, and and some kicking cayenne pepper. A little tip here is most air fryers are on the smaller side, so cook the potato wedges in batches. Our goal here is crispy and golden brown potato wedges. So toss in half the wedges at a time and cook for about 15 to 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, let's make a killer cheese sauce. Add butter to a saucepan that is over medium heat. Mix in enough flour to make the butter and flour mixture into a paste. Add milk, add cheese. Once the cheese is melted, you can add the seasoning, which is salt, pepper, paprika, mustard powder and if you want to kick it up a notch some dashes of hot sauce then let the flavors melt i'll leave a link in the comments to the full recipe now that the steak is resting our potato wedges have been air fried and we created a killer cheese sauce let's assemble our dish my first cut of steak is usually along the bone i then slice it the steak against the grain once you have sliced the steak add a pile of super crunchy potato wedges then add several large dollops of beautiful cheese sauce and there you have it perfectly charcoal grilled tomahawk steaks now all that is left to do is to serve the steaks along your favorite side dishes give the recipe a try and comment below telling me what is your favorite cut of steak and for the full recipe visit the link in the comments below check out the suggested playlist at the end for more char grilling recipes and visit my website smokybeginnings.com for even more grilling goodness until next time keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling have a good one